Hello everybody, this is Dr. August de Oliveira with Digital Enamel. I am here at the MicroLay booth with Miguel, um, and I'm excited to talk about this DLP printer. Um, I personally own this printer, I just got it a little while ago. Um, Dr. Jonathan Abenheim, if you guys know him, um, he's a great personality, um, he's on Dentaltown, he's on Facebook. He has a teaching center called the Smile Syllabus, and he's distributing this in the US. Um, there's a lot of things I like about this printer. Um, let's just take a little look at this uh, really quick. Um, after you do any sort of STL type printing, <laughs> stereolithographic printing, you have uh, a post curing process. So this DLP printer, uh, amongst other really cool functions, has a UV curing unit here that you can put your um, surgical guide or study model. Um, it has a really nice graphic user interface, um, but one of the greatest things about this is is the resolution. So the XY resolution of the dental fab is 55 microns in the XY and can print at a layer height of 10 microns each. So this is certainly um, good enough to do crown and bridge models. Um, because it's a DLP, it's also very fast. About how long does it take to print one model? Okay, uh, that uh, relies a uh, lot of in, in the resin you choose uh, to print with, but it could be uh, if you choose the fastest resin and you are using like 100 microns layer, it could be like uh, you can print like four models placing uh, like vertically in the in the plate, and uh, it could it could be uh, like uh, 90 minutes. Can you tell us a little bit about what this is and what this does? Uh, okay, well, this is uh, well, this is the the, the real. Uh, printer I mean this is the where the things happen here uh, we have like uh, this aluminium plate with uh, I think it's beautiful <laughs> yes it's very nice this is the build platform so if you flip that over for the camera um, the other side yeah so this is where the print gets stuck to when you're done and it's built up out of this vat of resin down there and you've got a number of profiles for different resins uh, can you tell me a, a little bit about some of the resins you recommend for this printer yes uh, well as you say we have we have uh, like uh, an open materials policy so as long as we as as we have uh, as we come up with uh, with new profiles you will be able to to print with uh, with this printer so we have uh, already profiled like uh, next and uh, resins most of them so you can just unload from our side uh, import to the machine and then you will you will be able to to um, to use it but now especially after this uh, this fair uh, we have uh, like uh, new contacts with uh, with new players in the materials market so I think that uh, we will increase this library of materials very soon with uh, new 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 companies or not so new like uh, uh, like Treve or like uh, maybe the tax uh, so yeah. uh, I see I, I thought the well I, I'm quite surprised that the, there is like so many new materials for 3d printer there is there's quite a few uh, materials and one thing that I was excited that Jonathan was talking about is there's a company actually in the US called maker juice and maker juice it's kind of a funny name uh, makes a resin that's about fifty dollars per liter and do you have those maker juice profiles yet no yet. not yet okay not yet, but we, will, yeah. we will yeah so so this is completely <laughs> open source format um, it's uh, we we're just talking about we're gonna get a new software release in the next few weeks uh, which is gonna make it a little bit more user-friendly it certainly is already now so Miguel <laughs> thank you so much for your time yep. good to see you and uh, stay tuned I'll post some more cases uh, from my dental fab that I have in my office in LA